Hey, I'm Craig, and today for the Surfboard Guide, we're gonna check out a full review of the OP1 by Christensen Surfboards. So this here is the OP1 by Christensen Surfboards. You would have seen a while ago, we put out our initial thoughts of the OP1. I uh, got some kind of strange comments about that. But anyway, our initial thoughts clip is just like an intro to the board. First few surfs, what we're thinking, what we're feeling, and then some feedback from you guys. I uh, got some really good comments, questions, DMs on our uh, Instagram at the Surfboard Guide if you haven't already checked us out. Um, but lots of comments going, hey, where's the, the surf footage and stuff like that. So we're back with our full review and we've got a couple of surf clips. Haven't been filming a lot of surfing lately, have been surfing a bit, haven't been filming. So a few clips just so you can see what it actually moves like in the water. Um, but we'll go into a little bit more detail. So this is a 510 uh, OP1. I believe the 510 stock is 31.9 liters. I beefed it up a little bit to 33 liters and actually don't know if I should have. 31.9 probably would have been all right, but 33 has been really good, a little extra paddle power. Um, and this is 510. 19 7 8 2 and 11 16 and it's 33 liters spot on so uh the op1 is part of the ocean pro op series by christians and surfboards i think it's an op1 two three and maybe a four i believe it's a model he's had for years and he kind of makes alterations to the the one and the two over the years you know to have kind of the latest performance version of that board uh, but the one at the bottom of that spectrum is the small wave kind of groveler so looking over it, 510 is kind of short. Uh, I'm 5'10 and a half, I'm about 93 kilos. My normal short boards are about 6'0, 5'11, 6'0, and around 32 to 33 liters. Uh, so volume is very similar to my short boards, maybe a tad bit more, and it's about two inches shorter than my short boards, um, and it's similar to my height, 5'10 uh, and a half on a good day. Uh, looking over it, it's shorter, it's wider, uh, holds a lot of width through its outline. It's still got a pointy performance shortboard nose, um, but does hold a bit of width through that front end. It has a accentuated hip in the back there. And what I really like is I like this whip through the back end, through the tail. It's nice and wide uh, under your back foot. And it's also nice and thick under your back foot, which I also really like because that, uh, that volume under your back foot feels like a real gas pedal when you want speed down the line, through turns, all that sort of stuff. Um, flipping it over a little bit, there's a really nice rail in the OP1. It holds a lot of volume uh, from the centre out to the rail. It's really quite, yeah, I'm going to say it's fuller. I'm going to say it's a fuller rail. Just above a mid, not like a really beefy, but it's fuller than a mid rail. But what's really nice is it's actually quite thick and full up in the front. So no beaks or any of that other stuff you'd see on other Christensen kind of more like alternative kind of boards he does. But it does feel like it holds a lot of thickness under the front foot and your chest up here. Uh, which is really good in small ways to hold speed, generate speed, get across flat sections, all that kind of stuff. Uh, then it is quite thick. Like I said, some thickness under the back foot. Uh, it does hold that volume and it's really, really nice across flat, weak kind of stuff. On the bottom, really simple, single concave in the front, really gentle. Oh, it's actually a bit of a double through the, um, the center. And then I believe, I thought it was just like the double ending through the tail, but Christensen said uh, there's a light V that comes out the back and you can definitely feel it. I just thought it was a continuation of the double. Uh, he says, because of the wired tail, having that V is kind of like adding power, power steering, which I thought was really cool. Uh, and it is, you know, V through the back makes it kind of, you know, rail to rail and surfing uh, much, much easier, especially when you've added width to a board. It's going to make it a lot easier to surf rail to rail. Um, so I've had this board actually for a while now. Uh, we put a clip out like a year ago. Uh, I dropped it and smashed the nose before I'd even ridden it. Uh, and I've been kind of on and off of it. I don't know why. Um, just there was no real pressure to put the review out. I was enjoying surfing it. Um, been surfing a lot of like mids, fishes, all different kind of stuff. And it was kind of a short board ish sort of shorter short board that I'd come back to when I wanted to get on something with a pointy nose and I was just enjoying it. So no real pressure to put the uh, review out. And then I got some you know, borderline kind of hate comments. <laughs> no, just some people that were like, can you hurry up, mate? Like, get the fucking review out. Um, and some people I spoke to that already bought one, they're like, hey, what are your thoughts on that? So I've been surfing it for a while. Um, it's pretty versatile. I've got some footage where the waves are really pretty small, very weak, and I'd probably normally grab like 
you know, more of like a fun board, uh, less point, maybe more roundness in the nose. Uh, and then I've got some footage where it's a bit bigger and better. Um, and unfortunately, sorry for the, the D-grade surfing, maybe worse than normal, but I've just come back from a big kind of snowboarding stint and not really surfing a whole lot. But yeah, hopefully it shows how the board moves through the water and kind of how it surfs. Um, See, so I've enjoyed it kind of waist to chest high uh, through to overhead. Uh, even when it's a little bit bigger, waves don't have to be pumping or anything like that, just kind of junky waves. But I have enjoyed it, even though it's a small wave groveler. I guess I just have access to so many other boards, like, you know, small fishes, quads, mid lengths, and that. I'm grabbing that other stuff when it's really, really small. But definitely, the extra beef I put in it, the thickness under the chest, it's definitely capable. It's definitely a groveler when waves get little and not a lot of push. But I'm grabbing this, you know, with a quite a versatile quiver. I'm grabbing this when waves are kind of, you know, waist chest high uh, to overhead. Very capable. If you kind of want one short board to sit in your quiver and you're surfing mainly average waves. Uh, I live in Sydney, in Australia, we get pretty average waves most of the time. Uh, so it's a really good Sydney board because it's gonna get through those crappy little onshore rip bowl kind of beach break days. It's also pretty capable when waves are good, waves are pumping. Uh, it can kind of hold its own. Like I said, sometimes that width can be a bit limiting when waves get bigger and better and hollower. Um, but the V off the back feels really nice. It's still easy to turn. So if you're looking for like one short board for the quiver, that's also, you know, kind of capable when waves get a bit better. I definitely would check out the OP1. When you start moving to OP2, OP3, they become a bit narrow, a bit more performance orientated. Uh, but definitely keen to check out one of them down the track, maybe the three or something. Uh, just worried about the quality of waves we get filming surfing and stuff, but we'll see how we go. Um, something else that kind of held me back from finalizing the review is I really kind of struggled to get a fin that I really gelled with uh, in the Christensen OP1. So like, I remember first putting the AM2s, which is the large Almeric template by Futures. Felt kind of good, but there were some things kind of missing. I tried an upright template, which I think Christensen recommends. Uh, that didn't feel great. I tried some of like the, you know, the speed generating fins that Futures do, and they felt okay for a little while, and I thought I hit the nail on the head with one of them. But I ended up coming back to the AM2s. Uh, I really like the AM2s. They're a great template. You know, they're, they're a, a glass fin, but they're not too stiff. Um, so while they're not a speed generating fin, I like the rakeness of the fin and also like the flex, especially when you've surfed them a bit, that I actually think they generate speed really, really well. So when you're moving and you, you know, you're pumping and turning, I feel like the flex in these fins, you know, different to the, the foil on the inside of fins, like the actual speed generating fins, I feel like these really, for people that like to pump and like to move and surf a lot, these generate sp speed really, really well. So I came back to the AM2s saying that, I know these are a pretty popular fin for people that ride shortboards, so you're probably gonna grab these. But if there's anything else you like, like if you like John John's uh, in Futures, you know, Fanning's, Jewel, whatever, I think you're gonna, whatever fin you're comfortable with, this board is very, very capable. Um, you know, a lot of the, it's a lot of the board that does the surfing. I think just put a fin in that you like and you're gonna have a whole lot of fun. I've just seen, I think they're out in the US now, but they're not out in Australia now, that Christensen has just brought out a fin range with Futures. So I know he's done some stuff in the past with uh, Captain Finco. He did some pretty limited, like more alternative stuff. I think only like twins with FCS, but he now looks like he's got um, like a twin fin, a five fin, uh, and a few different things with Futures, which I thought was a long time coming. You know, Christensen, uh, like a Californian kind of diehard shaper. Uh, Futures, like a strong American brand, you know, <laughs> out of the coast of California as well. Um, I wonder why it took them so long to come together. But anyway, uh, they've got some fins coming out. I've seen some, some photos. You probably would have seen some imagery on Futures on their Instagram and different things. They look epic. So, you know, we might tap back in, get a set of those when they're available in Australia. Check this out or the OP3 or something else. Really keen to get, especially those Christensen, five fins because we did like the nautilus quad um he's got some really cool quads and different boards and i'd love to get those five fins and check them out a few different boards so keep your eyes out for the christensen five fin i think the thruster would be absolutely epic in the op1 or any of the op series uh overall the op1's been absolutely epic um you know like i said i found it hard to find a fin to gel with at first but that kind of didn't mean the board didn't go well i guess i just couldn't really feel like i was unlocking its full potential but I started to think less about the fin and more about the board. Uh, everything in this board works. I really enjoy like the distribution of volume, you know, thickness under the chest, a fuller rail, but without feeling too kind of boggy through the water. And um, that width and thickness under your foot, that wider tail and that V off the back, just makes surfing really, really easy. Like I said, you'll see in some of the footage, uh, I'm surfing, but I don't feel like I'm surfing very well. Um, and it was kind of my first foray back into like shortboards. Um, so, 
it was a very gentle kind of entry back into shortboards, you know what I mean? If I got on something a little bit more performance, like something up the other end of the OP series, I don't think I'd be, you know, doing turns and cutbacks and that, I think I'd still be trying to find my feet. You know, footage from a little while ago, I've progressed a bit beyond there now, um, but definitely still favoring some more forgiving, <laughs> fun kind of craft. Uh, but this was a nice way to get back into shortboarding with just an easy to surfboard. Uh, I live in Sydney, Australia. People that live in Sydney, you know, California, I know people write it off. I think California actually has really good waves, but anyway, um, you know, if you live in that kind of suburban beach break sort of stuff, we are generally surfing whatever's thrown at you whether it's two foot on shore or it's kind of four or five foot and pumping, um, this is a great board, it'll do it all. I feel like it's just got this nice distribution under you. Uh, very similar, I feel like there's almost like a Christensen fish sitting in the middle of this pointy nose and that. Just a really nice float, it's gonna get you across small sections, small days, but also hold its own when it gets a little bit bigger. Look, overall, absolutely love the OP1. Apologies to everyone that's been hearing me up. It took so long to get the review out. Uh, definitely worth checking out. If you want a one board, short board quiver, or you just want a small wave performance groveler, it's absolutely epic. Thanks so much for Christensen Surfboards in Australia uh, and Onboard Store for the opportunity to check it out. And hopefully you get a chance to check one out too. Thanks for watching. <laughs>